I guess when you have mastered the ability to bottle organic nature when it comes to headphones, timbre and tuning, no matter what product you create, whether it's for the right audience or for the wrong audience, there will always be something that's memorable, tangible, definable, and most importantly, unique. Extending a massive thank you to Viking Weave, especially to ZMF and Zach himself for allowing Convince Me Audio the pleasure of reviewing the latest offerings from this company, the ZMF Atrium. So this headphone sits in their flagship line of headphones alongside the Verite, Verite Open and Verite Closed that we reviewed not too long ago. And ZMF headphones as a rule have a tendency to live alongside other members of their family so that this set of audio products finds the right audience and closely tailors to their likes. This is kind of fortunate because we find that when a company releases a flagship, it usually, not always, but usually makes the previous flagships redundant. But in this situation, I'm happy to say you can either own both or just one. So let's take a hardware tour. This Seahorse case comes with the majority of their headphones, unless you have the limited edition where they usually create a beautiful wood version of the headphones materials and then obviously becomes a bit more special obviously but this case uh, let's actually have a look shall we this case is rubber protective it's uh, it's really good for traveling it's not too big it's not as big as the Odyssey stuff up there I don't think um, yeah definitely a little bit thicker though uh, it's like a little square box so we take the headphones out for now my goodness look at the <laughs> I'm gonna put this on the table for now we get a set of headphones obviously um, and then lifting the lid again, we get some cleaning cloth. Nice, put that over here. We get some documentation and some salt from the United States. Let's put this away, do not eat that. That's quite a heavy box. Uh, okay, so this is the warranty card from ZMF and stuff and booklets and sign cards. Ah. Very nice, okay. Let's put that over here, we don't need that. And this is a nice cleaning cloth, okay. Very, very good, put that over there. We don't need that for now. What we are actually here for is the ZMF Atrium open back headphones. With the ZMF headphones, as a rule, we also get two cables. We get a basic ZMF OFC cable, single-ended to Mini XLR, obviously, like all other ZMF headphones, as far as I'm aware. They all begin with a pair of Mini XLRs for the headphone end, and this one has spinny, 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 spin, a 6.3 jack. This is your single-ended cable, very nice. And then we have this braided ZMF cable, Mini XLR again. Actually, this cable's really nice. Um, four pin XLR, male, obviously. <laughs> I was hunting for the words. Right, so nice cables, keeps its shape a little bit. This one, yeah, it's a bit janky. I actually prefer the VC cable. This one is a little bit thinner, a little bit longer, and for some reason it just keeps its shape. So, mm, yeah, not a fan of that one. But the braided cable is actually, let's bring that over here by itself. This one is very nice. It doesn't keep its shape. It's very straight. Very, very light as well, actually. Um, uh, also, when you put your order on the ZMF website, you can match the connectors and the endpoints with certain parts of the headphone, which is a beautiful touch. I absolutely love that. And you can really tailor these, finally bringing it into frame to match these. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, look at this. So for on the go uh, with the IFI Griffin, Thanks to Double Helix and Pete over there, he has made a special silver four core cable, which is light, absolutely beautiful, and just does not keep its shape. When somebody puts it nicely away in the 
bag it comes with, you find that you don't normally get any tangles or anything like that. It's perfectly straight. Beautiful connectors. Look at these things. I mean, come on. He has put on a Pentacon adapter for us to go with this bad boy here, the IFI Griffin. And this beautiful light cable does not get in the way and it's ultra light uh, with the mini XLRs for the headphones themselves. Um, thank you so much again, Double Helix. This is greatly appreciated. It's actually made this review very, very, very uh, easy to do on the go. I did not have a cable like this lying around and I reached out to him and said, um, could you provide us with something to actually get this review done so that I can actually test this unit on the go because a lot of people might want to move away from their desk occasionally um, in the office, etc. And uh, this has been brilliant. And it really does come with this really, really beautiful little pouch that's engraved rabbit skin inside or it feels like it. So one of those comfortable um, velvet material with the writing etched out. This is really, really nice. Um, so custom cables will be down below. If you're interested in that sort of thing, this thing is so freaking light. Honestly, I think you could wear it on. I have had IEM cables where that's heavier than this um, and you lose absolutely none of the technical abilities and it really does work extraordinarily well with the Atrium headphones or any other mini XLR headphones. Um, I've been enjoying that a tremendous amount. So thanks again. These headphones come in cherry. This can also be aged. It costs, I think, $200 extra and obviously will create a heavier headphone, adding 30 grams to the headphones themselves. These are 490 grams. Should we take a tour? Sorry, I can't, I can't stop. I really can't stop picking this up. Oh my God. Let's start at the top. This unit, it's wrapped in leather. You can get vegan or you can get suede. It's up to you. Now, the first uh, difference from the VC, we find up top right here on the headband. The headband is about the same width, maybe a tiny bit wider, but what we find is actually it's a little bit thicker and underneath the headband themselves, there are little wedges of padding. One, two, three, laid out like a stack of salami. It's actually really good for eliminating that hot spot that usually builds up with heavy headphones on the head. Not that these are very heavy. Looking at the Final Order D8000 Pro behind me, that is like over 500 grams. Uh, we will get to that review. And there will be a lot of comparisons uh, in this review with other top of the line headphones, by the way. So, and then underneath uh, this, headband, which most companies would say, yeah, this is enough, this will do. This is actually even more comfortable by itself than the Abyss Diana V2. And then underneath that, we get this beautiful leather strap. It's etched underneath, smells like a cow, absolutely beautiful. Now the frame of the headphone can be purchased in magnesium, which reduces the weight by 34 grams, but obviously, it's uh, not, I believe it's not anodized, it's painted so it can wear out. I could be mistaken about that. Um, these rods can be purchased in different colors as well. You can really tailor the ZMF headphones to your preference. And then finally, coming down to these beautiful cups. I have played around with a lot of headphones that have been constructed out of wood but they always feel a little bit overly shiny, a little bit plasticky and or a little bit too mahogany-esque. But this, it's like a matte finish. It's so beautifully done. It's a work of art, honestly. Do I love this more than the Ironwood VC? I would say I wouldn't be able to choose, but look at this gaze on this gothic etched open back design. It's just mesmerizing, absolutely love this. And it feels really light in the hand, by the way. Also, we have some vents at the back of the circumference of the cups, which is very rare. I've never seen this. The, um, ZMF have patented their own damping system to assist sonically with the, obviously the headphone tuning themselves. And then finally, we come to the pads. These are the universal perforated whether you want a universal pervert on your face, that's completely up to you, it's your life choice. But this universal perforated pad is actually really comfortable. I believe you can buy this in vegan. Yes, you can. You can get this in vegan as well or lambskin. 
uh, they are ultra comfortable, they breathe very well, the opening is quite large as you can see, even for enormous ears, your ears will really won't touch the drivers. Um, and uh, you get one additional pad that you can choose. Obviously, Mini XLR terminations at the bottom of the headphones. So that's the headphone. Let us bring this thing into frame, put this here, because we are kind of done with the hardware. But I want this. So, these are the new ZMF atriums. Let's talk about some specifications. These are a biocellulose M52 driver. It's based on the Otor drivers tuned specifically for the atrium. Uh, the Verite closed. The Verite was a polyethylene naphthalate driver with a 20% beryllium overlay. Um, and that is uh, definitely distinguishable in the sonic nature of these headphones, which we will get onto in the sound section. These are 300 ohm, akin to their brethren, and it's a 96 dB, so less sensitive than some of their other line. But I find them to be driven quite well with a lot of portable equipment. Obviously, you don't get the same level of uh, finesse, but uh, I've been using this on the IFI Go Blue over there and this little unit here, where are you? The IFI Griffin, the review for this will be coming shortly. Uh, this has been reviewed on the Serene from Hollow Audio, on the May behind me, on the Cord Dave over there, the Benchmark AHB2, and on this side, the Cord TT2 and the M Scaler, respectively. I think I've put this headphone on more systems on compared to any other headphone bar the Sesvaras over there. Okay, specifications out of the way. Simple, straightforward. Hardware out of the way, beautiful, stunning, definitely a flagship material. In fact, it's built so well, it's so beautiful, it actually overshadows a lot of the $4,000 headphones. Especially the $6,000 headphone there, the high finance as far as if you can believe it. Okay, we have discussed the Atrium's hardware, absolutely stunning, specifications, which are pretty ordinary, and finally, let's discuss the most important part of the headphones, the sound. The overall sound signature of the atriums is a dark sound signature with elevated sub-bass, elevated mid-bass, sloping off in the upper bass region, dark mid-range, and extended, slightly laid-back treble region, but extending very, very, very well. This headphone sits firmly alongside the Diana V2, the Bowers and Wilkins P9 signatures, and where are you? So you're on this side, the LCD5s, with different variations, obviously, of this dark sound signature. For example, the Diana V2 is a little bit warmer and a little bit darker because of the treble region being slightly muted. The LCD5 has the same soundscape, of a dark sound signature, yet the treble region is even more forward and extended than these. The Bowers and Wilkins P9 signatures sits alongside the atriums as a closest to its brethren in familiarity of this sound signature. Comparing the VC to the atriums, I find, as a rule, the VCs are definitely warmer. They're definitely not as smooth in the frequency response the tuning on the atrium is to die for. I believe they both have the same sort of timbre capability. At times, it feels as though the Verite Closed is a little bit more resolving and a little bit better in the timbre region, but the atrium's tuning is good every time. It works with every genre. Honestly, I am enamored by these headphones. These headphones have been here for a week. I normally don't do reviews with such a short turnaround, but I've put 50 hours on these headphones. Not on the desk, on my freaking head. I have used it on the go with the Go Blue. I have used it on the go with the Griffin, which we lost. I have used it with the Griffin right here. And at the desk, I have used it with this beast, the Cord Dave. And obviously with my own setup, the Make KTE back there, and uh, with the 
TT2 and Mscaler, thanks to Mo for sending that in, and thanks especially to Jez for the sending this Dave in. Before we break down the frequency response, I would like to take a track so that you can all follow and understand what I hear when I listen to the atriums, and especially what I hear when I put other headphones on in the same category and above for the same track. Obviously, because of YouTube, we can't share this track and unfortunately listen along while I'm talking, which is very annoying, but you could close caption this and just play that track. So let's take the hardest track I have, which is Han Zimmer's Pirates of the Caribbean Live Suite from Cobuzz. It's a two-parter. We're going to concentrate on both of these tracks actually today. So taking the first track on the atriums and on the Dave first, because it's the best performance. The Atrium's soundscape does not change much with equipment, but what does change is the quality. So that the bass is tighter, the bass goes deeper, the mid-range is even blacker with a pitch black background, the treble region is more resolving and smoother, obviously as you go up in the chain compared, to, for example, a Griffin to a Dave or a TT2 or a May on an AHP2. Each of these, setups provide something new. But as a rule, the sound signature of the atrium does not change, which is wonderful. It basically means when you pick up an atrium, listen to it on the go, and then go back to your desk, you're not too surprised. You're just surprised by the level of scalability for these headphones. So taking the atrium, listening to this vast track, we find that the stage really does open up. The stage is pretty big on the atrium. Um, it's nipping at the heels of the Verite Closed. I think the Verite Closed, in fact, the even though they're closed, is actually slightly bigger in the depth region. But this does scale very well stage-wise. And we find in this auditorium for the Hans Zimmer track, we have this sprawl of instruments all over. It's not as holographic and 3D as the Verite Closed. It's more of a semicircle kind of soundstage rounding out at the front and straight in the middle. So you're sitting in the auditorium three or four rows back, but the vocals have a tendency to have the ability to come forward. In this track, we find all the instruments are very well placed. So the vocalists from the choir are here. You have the horns here, and then you have the other instruments surrounding them like that alongside you do get a full field of depth and space. It doesn't feel too claustrophobic. Detail-wise, it distinguishes instruments very well, but it's not as etched out as something like an LCD-5 or a Sasvara. Those have a laser-etched pre precisional cut. But I think on Atrium, instruments have a tendency to sit very nicely in the track. Moving from left to right, instruments don't fade. They wander about in the space very successfully. But there are some aspects of this headphone that actually are in the $2,000 region and don't approach the $4,000 region, and that's detail. Detail is there. This headphone has detail, but it's a part of the instrument, look for it and find it sort of detail than the ridiculous nature of detail on the LCD-5 or the organic nature and realism of the Sasvara. Yet the Verite Closed, I find, has more detail than the Atriums. But the Atrium has the timbre and the tuning and the tonal balance that makes you forget about excessive detail. It just feels right. Not overly emphasized, but right. Now let's attack the frequency response from 20 hertz all the way to 20 kilohertz. This headphone, in the human hearing range, takes advantage of this extremely well. So the Hans Zimmer track, the deep horns, have wonderful resonancy in the sub bass region, wonderful punch from the classical drums in this track, the mid-range comes forward and it's lush and it's addictive the ZMF way for the choir within the track. And as we climb in the treble region, we find that there is a dip in the 
lower treble, but extends very well in the mid treble and upper treble for the higher ends of violins and the vocalist as they go really high. It's quite airy, it doesn't feel overly dampened, and you do get a full sense of space. Um, the tuning of this headphone, as I keep repeating, is one of the best I've heard. It's just so smooth and silky without diminishing detail and microdynamics. Absolutely addictive punch. The bass is very springy, so it doesn't feel like deadened, you know? Every time a kick drum or a classical drum hits, by the way, the strength of these headphones is drums and vocals. It feels as though the drivers are bouncing, like, like a spring, so it doesn't feel overly dampened, and I really do like this. So it does portray the track extremely well. Not the best of details, not the best of resolution in the lineup of flagship headphones, but definitely the king in a lot of areas like the timbre and the tuning. So let's break down the frequency response and in comparisons with other headphones. Sub bass region is rather elevated. It's definitely present and it shows itself with a higher end equipment. So for this part of the frequency response, I'm gonna concentrate on the chord Dave. You find that notes have a sustainability and resonances as it goes up and down the scale, which is wonderful. It doesn't really drop off. The LCD5 in comparison to this is quicker. The drivers on the Atrium are not as quick as the LCD5. Um, those are planar, obviously, but it's not as fast as a Verite Closed, which is a polyethylene naphthalate combo with the beryllium. That is a much quicker driver. Sub bass is definitely bigger and more than the LCD5. Taking into account the D8000 Pro from Final Audio, I think these go head to head in amount of sub bass you get. Elevation, presence within the stage, very subwoofer-esque rather than the lean linearity of a Focal Utopia or an LCD5, even more than a Sesvara. Sesvara has more bottomless bass, feels as though it's just going down forever, but the presence is more apparent Definitely, I will say, on an atrium. It's more. It's just more. I think it will satisfy bass heads. Yet it's clean. Climbing up to the mid bass region, this is where this headphone punches very hard. I'm actually really surprised on these universal pervert pads. These perforated pads are really well tuned uh, for the drivers. They are a really good combo. Um, I would say this punches harder than the LCD5 punches harder than a Focal Stelia, does not punch as hard as a Utopia does. That thing hits hard. The Solitaire P, I think, has more resolution in this region than this headphone, definitely, but this hits harder. Climbing up to the upper bass region, um, this is where the headphone is shining because no instrument sounds thin. Drum skins, the resonances of drum skins, especially in the tom-toms, is Wonderful. Oh my God, I think it's one of my favorites, honestly. This has the presence and the attack, the Verite Closed has more texture, but drums on this headphone is B. B A E. I think it's better tuned than the Diana V2. Diana tends to be a bit thin in this area unless you threw it on the benchmark and even then it doesn't match this, no way. The Focal Stelia is okay, it's quite present, but because there's that V taper and there's that dip in the mid range, uh, in the lower mid range, um, it's quite present. Uh, I think this is better. Yes, I think I will. I will put the pe uh, the atrium above the Stellias uh, for this region. It's a uh, it's an interesting one. Uh, it really does make the base region rather full between the sub, the mid, and the upper base region. Mid-range on this headphone, I don't think can be touched unless you go into the $4,000 region and above, uh, unless you're looking at a Sesvara. I think it's even better than the Verite Closed. It's smoother. 
There is a dip in the lower mids by about half a dB. I have not looked at the frequency response, but by just listening. Climbing up to the upper mid range, um, where the shoutiness happens at times. This headphone is quite well controlled depending on the equipment, but on the Griffin, you do find sometimes things don't get a bit busy and shouty. I think you need a proper um, amp DAC to really resolve this area. It's really weird. I would say this area, the upper mid range, is the weakest part of these headphones, legitimately. Um, it's not as bad as many others, but when you get a lot of tracks that congregate around this area, especially jazz, when you have things like clarinets, saxophones, etc., and if they're all tumultuously uh, congregating in this area, you find this headphone tends to lose some of its focus. It's detailed, it's good, it's not bad, it's smooth, so it's still enjoyable, but it loses some of its coherency. The LCD XC has the same issue, but a thousand times worse. But this does get better with, for example, the Dave. Um, but there are other better headphones, I think, in this region, definitely. The treble region does dip in the lower treble uh, and then climbs nicely and rises nicely. So uh, I would say it's not the most resolving of headphones, um, but it's definitely keeping up in the $2,000 to $3,000 category. Um, some headphones like the LCD5 has more detail, has more resolution, has more transparency, but this has more tactility, where you feel as though your mind's eye is actually touching the instruments. And it's not on the levels of Sesvara by a long shot. That, that's way, 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 way ahead. Um, I found it quite close to the Solitaire P. Not by much, but I found it quite close to the Solitaire P. Um, we auditioned the Solitaire P and the X9000s from Stax and the 009S um, and Utopia and everything else on Saturday. So it's very fresh in my memory. Um, but I think I would choose the tuning of Atrium over all of those headphones. I think I would choose the tuning of Atrium over many, 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 many headphones. It's my top 10 favorite headphone. So that covers as much of the frequency response as we can audibly without measurements actually here at hand. Let's discuss who this headphone is for first. I would say this headphone is for somebody who loves the dark sound signature. It's not a bright headphone. It's definitely a comforting headphone, works with every genre. You can actually use it on the go. They're ultra comfortable, it's ultra light, it's ultra beautiful, um, and it smells absolutely beautiful. That leather really is amazing. Um, I love these headphones. They lay flat as well like this, which I did not discuss in the beginning, but it really is useful when you're taking it on the go. They're not overly large. They're quite narrow, the headphones. Um, Compared to, for example, the Odyssey line, the LCD line, those are really, really thick boys um, that when you turn your head, it does build up momentum, unless it's something like the LCD5. That is a tiny, 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 tiny little headphone here, which we will get onto the review shortly. So if you fancy a headphone, which can be your own one and only headphone legitimately, you can parallel ZMF headphones very well. And it's for somebody who loves uh, balanced tuning, who loves timbre, and who loves realism who loves enormous amounts of bass and who loves fun sounding headphones. It's for you. Let's discuss some equipment pairing. On the IFI Go Blue, I think you can get by. Walking around your house or office, I think you can get by just for ease of use. But the Griffin definitely adds more to the bass region. You find the sub bass does roll off on these lower end uh, pieces of gear, definitely. Um, but it keeps its tuning, it keeps its tonality, which is absolutely wonderful. It means you won't be shocked, you won't get any rising peaks, and there is a peak in the frequency response, which I forgot to mention, that's in the 5K region. But it's so well done, it gives snaps and attacks really, really well, um, but it's never fatiguing. It's wonderful. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. On the TT2, it's a wonderful pairing. The stage really does open up. You get the full feeling of depth. You really do. Um, I will say it will stage a lot bigger than a lot of the other headphones. It will crush the LCD5. The LCD5 has very small stage. It will rival something like the D8000 Pro over there. Um, and that's a $4,000 headphone um, in the stage region. And that's on even lower end equipment as well. But the stage will collapse on the IFI Go Blue and it will increase a little bit more on the Griffin. 
on the TT2, it will give you the full vastness of the stage, which is wonderful. But the best pairing of all, including the AHP2 and the May KTE behind me, is the Chord Dave. And for that, let me paint you a picture. Imagine in your mind's eye, you're in one of the best hotels in the world, a five-star luxury hotel. It's midnight, it's midsummer. Your feet are buried deep in the thick plush carpet, which feels as though it's soft, yet you feel the marble of the floor underneath your feet. The sub bass drops low with good solid foundation. And as you look up, you can see the curtains opening up onto the balcony and you step onto the balcony. You step onto the stage of the atrium. As you look into the sky, you see a navy blue crystal clear sky. It feels as though it's the void. And that's the black background that Dave provides. It's like looking into a void. I have never seen any other gear with such a black background, including the May. The nearest equivalent, I would say, is the gold touch from Low 2. That has that kind of black background. And yet, as you gaze up at the sky, seeing all the stars that are as remote and clear as crystals in the sky. These are the instruments. They feel as though they've got an inner, inner glow because of that treble region rising and really well extended. Every instrument is well illuminated within this pitch black background. And as you're looking down the balcony, over the banisters, you can see the fountains and the grass, which feels as though it's lit up by moonlight. This is how every instrument appears to you. Everything is distinct, well-placed, and well-etched out. Not hard enough to be unrealistic, like an LCD-5, which is laser-etched or utopia. Just present. It feels as though you can reach out and touch the stars, literally grab it off the air. And that's the tactility of instruments on the atrium, especially drums and vocals. They pop, they are very, very vivid. And as you look into the heavens, you see a cluster of galaxies moving away from our local planetary systems and stars. This is where the upper mid-range tend to convey the same sort of coherency with instruments, where everything seems to be a little bit more busy, I would say, a little bit more busy, a little bit less defined. And as you look into the other parts of the universe, where the stars are separate, the galaxy swirls are separate, this is the treble region. It separates very, very well. You feel the cool, warm breeze on your skin. You're neither cold nor warm. And this is the frequency response. Nothing is overly harsh and nothing is overly present until the wind rises and you feel it wrap around your hand and wrap around your arm and it's a warm tropical breeze. This is the sub bass and bass region where it's more elevated, it's more present and you feel it more. So you are surrounded by this beautiful architecture, nature and universe. You're comforted and you're not underwhelmed. Everything that is there should be there is there and that's the atrium soundscape. It lives nicely alongside the Verite Closed. I can't choose which one I love more. I think Verite Closed is a little bit more technical in the stage, speed and transparency, but not by much. Tuning and timbre is better on Atrium. I've put 50 hours on this headphone in one week. I've not touched any other headphone and I keep reaching for it and it's beautiful. So let's do the scores. For build quality, and design five tigers. For tuning, tonal balance, and timbre, and frequency response, even nature, five tigers. For resolution, detail, and microdynamics, four tigers. For ease of use, four tigers. For comfort, 
five tigers. This headphone gets a firm, very firm, four tiger scoring from CMA. Absolutely brilliant. You buy this, you will not be disappointed. I think if you buy this, like a lot of people in my groups have, you will probably forgo a lot of your other headphones because you just won't use them anymore. Well done, Zach. Well done, ZMF. Thank you so much, Viking Weave, for allowing us to review this unit. I'm Koji CEO, and before I go, I would like to mention the Convince Me Audio Patreon and a special thank you to the Patreon members for keeping our reviews alive, for people like Jez, people like Mo, people like Mimic, for sending in units for review. We really do appreciate it. I will see you next time. Peace.